won't be surprised if he shows up. Yeah. No. Are you ready? I'm locked. I'm waiting on you. Locked and loaded. All right, I will call this meeting to order. Please, uh, we're going to start with the roll call. Okay. Ballinger? Here. Bitters? Here. Thorne? Here. Carlson? Here. Damro? Here. Donahue? Here. Drawn? Here. Hammond? Here. Heideman? Here. Herman? Jose? Here. Toth? Here. Lassard? Here. Thiel? Here. Vanderweel? Wolf? Here. 14 present. All right, we do have a quorum. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't know. Looks like it. If we could uh, use our microphones tonight, I, we are being recorded. If not live, I didn't ask, but it's one of the two. so It is live, so please use your microphones. I see approval of the minutes on the agenda, but there is nothing attached, um, so we will move on. Um, public forum. Anybody here for public forum tonight? If not, we'll move on to 2.1. Uh, Charter Ordinance Number 1-15-16 by Alderpersons Carlson and Bellinger. An ordinance being subject to the home rule provisions of Section 66.0101 of the Wisconsin Statutes to reduce the number of the Alderpersons in the City of Sheboygan from 16 to 10 by the 2017-2018 Council year. Mr. Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Um, for discussion purposes, I'll move to approve. Second. All right. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion. Mr. Hammond. Thank you again. I guess I will kick this off. Um, you know, we've, we've talked several times about going to smaller size councils, um, and the one concern I have and continue to have about going from whether it's 16 to 12, 16 to 10, 16 to 8, um, I understand the logistics of 10 because we have 10 supervisory districts, districts and I'm fine with that. It's how we're going to deal with the committee structure. You know, I know personally, um, being finance chair and president, you know, that comes with you know, six or seven other committee assignments. Um, I guess my question would be, how are we going to deal with um, five standing committees with 10 older persons and making sure that we have the quorum issue figured out and can get the work done that, that needs to be done, not in, notwithstanding all of the other committee assignments that uh, council folks are on, whether it's you know, architectural review, um, city planning, you know, so on and so forth. So I guess that's a question. Um, and if we can solve that, I guess you know, you know, I'd be a lot more amicable to looking at going from 16 to 10, but you know, that's a lot of workload for, for 10 folks. Um, so I, I guess uh, that's kind of where I'm at at this point. Okay, thank you. All the person down here. Um, thank you. I would speak in favor of this. Um, I think it's long overdue. Um, 16 people is just way too many for a city this size. I think reducing it to 10 following the county supervisory districts makes sense because we won't need to redraw lines or redistrict. And then when the county does redistrict after 2020, we can just fit within those, within those supervisory districts. Um, I think Alderman Hammond brings a good point uh, forward with respect to uh, committee work, and I've been thinking about this. And one of the things that we have not done in any thorough and innovative way is look at how we do business. We've had five standing committees forever. A lot of these committees do a, a whole lot of administrative work that really could be done with staff. And if it impinged on people's personal rights, um, um, you know, if it was a denial of a license or denial of of a sex offender waiver or whatever, those things could come to committee. But when you think of all the things we do that really staff should do, and we can be the reviewing legislative body instead of the administrative body, I think that works. The good thing about this, although, <laughs> although I, I would be one of the people in, in District 4 who would have to run again real quick, but um, I think um, we have lots of time from the time we pass this ordinance to figure it out. And I really think we could, let's just look how we do, how we do business. I think we can be more efficient. I think that we can do business in the kind of way that, you know, we expect um, all other segments of society these days to do, is to look at what you're doing, look at how you're doing it, and see if you can do it better. And I just really think that we can do it, 
and that, and that we should really take a stab at this. Um, uh, I just think it's a, it's a great idea, and I thank you for bringing it forward. Thank you. Um, at this point, I'm just going to interject real quick. I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, I, this was a concern of, um, of mine as well as Alderman Bellinger's. Um, we've had some preliminary discussions on this. My intent would be after passing this, we would um, put it in the hands of strategic fiscal planning to come up with the committee structure to study it and um, put some work behind it as Alderman, uh, Alder Roman Donahue has stated. A couple ideas that come to mind right away are combining some of our standing committees. If you look at some other cities, um, such as Green Bay, Stevens Point, uh, public safety and law and licensing are actually combined. I've seen co combinations of public safety and public works. Um, we could combine salaries and grievances and finance together. There's quite a few things that we can do. Um, I think that's definitely something that is feasible within the next year, as, um, as she stated. Um, at this point, I would defer to other person, Boren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, about a year ago, uh, Alderperson Koth and I brought in a, a similar resolution or, or ordinance change. Uh, and with the intent at that time, uh, first of all, I wouldn't have brought it forward if I didn't favor going to 10 aldermen. I do favor that. However, uh, I'm not going to support going into this before we know exactly what the committee structure is going to be, what committees we're going to combine, uh, committees that we can maybe possibly do away with and give that to staff. Uh, another thing, uh, I think the mayor is going to have to decide how many standing committees aldermen are going to have to be on. I think the, day is, the, the time is probably over where aldermen are going to be able to be on one standing committee. Uh, and I think this should all be done ahead of time and come back with a package. If Strategic Fiscal wants to do it, fine, whatever, uh, with input from the mayor and, uh, and maybe the chief administrative officer. But I'm not going to vote for going to 10 aldermen until I know if I decide to run again, not only for the one-year term coming up, but possibly another term after that. I want to know in advance what my responsibilities are going to be, uh, and, I, I, and I don't want to... Uh, vote on doing it tonight, and then, well, we're going to figure it out later. I don't think that's the way it should work. I think we should be uh, uh, presented with a complete package and then go from there. Thank you. Thank you. All the person can. Thank you, Chairman. I am going to support your charter ordinance. Um, I, of course, was Thank in you. favor. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> One out of three. Um, I actually would have supported, supported the eight. Um, but yeah, I will support the 10. I feel that if we were actually at more committees, uh, we'd be a little bit more informed and uh, would make an informed decision. So thank you. Thank you. Great. Anything else from the floor? Oh, other person, Hammond. Um, thank you again. Um, again, I'm, I don't object to going to 10, just for the record. I guess, question for Attorney Adams. Is it possible for somebody from your office to put together a list of the committees that require an older person to be on them versus those that we have an older person on that we just choose to have an older person on, if that, makes, if that question makes sense? Um, I know the five standing committees have to be older persons, or three if we combine them, however that works. But you know things like city planning, you know, architectural review, all those committees that we have older persons on, which ones are required to have one of us on, and which ones are, could we, you know, have at large members of the community part of, you know, that stuff has to come back to council anyways in most cases. Um, so if, if somebody from, you know, yourself or Rose yeah. would be willing to do that for us, I think that would go a long way to helping us, you know, move this. To other person Donnie's um, point, we, we have streamlined things not as much as I'd like um, over the last couple of years, but we have done some things to start streamlining. We've passed off, for example, risk management and some of these other types of things have morphed into finance. We've given staff more leeway uh, with respect to approving things, um, particularly with risk, um, <coughs> approving expenditures under 15, you know, all of those types of things in order to get to this point where all the persons are legislating and not getting involved in the day-to-day -day administration. I'd like to see that continue um, as we go forward, and this might be the impetus for doing that. So if your office would be willing to do that, um, Attorney Adams, in the next week or two, we can get this on strategic fiscal very quickly and you know, start having this conversation. So thank you. And with that being said, we'd be under a deadline because we'd have to have it figured out within a year. So that's kind of right. a... Correct. 
the impetus for this, this would force us to um, not drag our feet because I, I believe that would happen if we didn't do it now. All right, anything else from the floor? Alder Person Ballinger. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, when I was first elected, one of the first things I did was brought a resolution to reduce the size of, of the council. And at that time, I, uh, the most logical thing would be to cut it in half. Um, I since have changed my opinion, and uh, I think 10 is the, the number to go with, so it does match up with the, the county supervisor districts, and that would make elections and uh, the administration of, of such elections much easier you know, moving forward. Um, I'm going to support this. I, you know, I, I'm one of the, the I signed my name onto this uh, resolution as well, so uh, I'm, I'm certainly in favor of it. I think that if we uh, were to pass this, uh, it would give us certainly the, the impetus to look at the committee structure and take it seriously and move forward at, at the streamlining process. We've already um, instituted direct referrals and um, attending meetings remotely. We've approved that, so there's some other uh, flexibilities and things um, in the procedural process that will, uh, I think, allow this to be uh, easier than it would have been in the past. So um, I understand Alderman Bourne's concerns that he would like to have everything laid out and um, you know, nice and neat in a package and, and look at it ahead of time. But I think if we were to delay this and, and wait for that, there's, there's no impetus or urgency on, on doing that and I think by passing this there's enough time for there's enough time that we can go through and, and make some strategic logical and you know um, important decisions related to committee structure and you know I don't think that there would be a barrier to you know by passing this that I don't <laughs> think the committee structure concern uh, should be something that should preclude somebody from supporting this. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you for your comments. Anything else from the floor? If not, I have a motion on Alder Person Hammett. I apologize. I don't mean to monopolize this. I just have a legal question for Attorney Adams. Um, with respect to, you know, if we were to pass this resolution, and I think it's the mayor's discretion as to whether he wants to put it on the agenda, but delayed, so this gets passed tonight, we delay the vote at the council level until the second meeting in December, which gives the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee a month to kind of ramp some things up and provide some structure is that doable it's we would have to have this through i'm sorry through council before december for when people pull papers because they've got to know how long their term is going to be what, but we're not doing this till 17. why would we need to do that mr chair that's right we did change it right i mean you can you can delay it it's, it's not really changing anything other than the term of years there is the earlier you get it done, the better for a couple of reasons. One is so that when people are pulling the papers, they know what they're running for. The other is obviously the clerk's office um, needs some time frame in order to do all the things that they do as far as elections as well. But, the, but it could be done this way. We wouldn't be violating any... Yeah, I believe you can still do it in December. I, I think the, the better... It, it, when, when this came, you know, my, my advice was try to get it done in, in November yet because I think that's better both because of the issue of people pulling papers already December 1st and for the clerk's office. But my conversations with the clerk's office suggest that because we're not dealing with changes in actual borders until a year down the line, um, it's, they can deal with it. So we could pass tonight... The mayor could hold it on the committee or the council agenda until we've had a chance at least to strategic fiscal to meet and have a conversation about it. You could. Thank you. Right. Alderman Bitters. Uh, going to Alderman Hammond's earlier request for Attorney Adams, I, as I read through the ordinances uh, late last week, I, I counted five official committees that it's written into ordinance that it require at least an alderman. In some cases, it's a, a, having a blank on which one it was, but uh, one of the committees requires all of the standing committee heads, uh, but the, the official count would be five, <laughs> it, as I saw it. And then there's other committees that the mayor appoints that 
have aldermen, a uh, sustainable task force comes to mind, but it's not written anywhere in the, in the ordinances, at least as I could find it. Thank you. I guess I would just add that, I mean, this does affect polling papers for 2016 because it would only be for one for one year term. So that could affect whether or not some members of this body would run. Um, that's, that's why I'm of the opinion that it should be passed before December 1st. Um, but I'll leave it at that. Alderperson Ballinger. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this would be for Attorney Adams or for maybe Sue or something, but could, could at the time when you present the documents for the standing committees and, and the things that uh, Alderman Hammond requested. Could you at that same time provide a, um, a map of the aldermatic districts right now versus what the county would have so we could see, you know, where we live and what we, you know, what, what that would look like? I'm sure that uh, the city clerk's office has the maps for the, uh, the city. They're also on the city website. The uh, county maps are on the uh, county supervisory maps. I found them on the county okay. um, uh, website. Um, they all go by wards, so uh, the best way to compare is to look at what wards are in each, um, and that that's the difference. But and I can certainly you know provide a at least a list of wards. I don't have the software to create maps. But. Okay. Thank you. All right. So any other comments from the floor? All have been born. Thank you, uh, Attorney Adams. Would you uh, would you go over this uh, business on on the document? It's the last section down there about the 60 days after passage and publication. It goes goes into effect. Right. So uh, because it's a charter ordinance, there there is 60 days for people to pull to to basically come back. Uh, in the city, get enough uh, signatures and force it to a referendum. So it would not go into effect in, in, unless if there uh, if those went through. So yeah, you're right. I, you know, I, I I missed that when we were having our discussion. You really do need to get it done in December because you've got to get you've got to have the opportunity for people to uh, take care of that. Uh. Then I was also wondering if there's a problem with some of these ancillary committees right. by, uh, if there's a problem legally or even by appearance, that if you have some of these ancillary committees and there's going to be no alderman, potentially no alderman rep representation on those committees, uh, is that going to create a, a, a legal problem or an appearance problem where you're going to have possibly citizen appointments voting on all this stuff? Yes, it's going to have to come back to the county, but uh, that to me poses another problem. I, I know last year when we were cons when Alderman Koth and I were considering this, I had a call from a couple of constituents, and they asked me, "Well, what are the standing committees going to be? Are they going to be three aldermen and two citizens, or what?" I said, "I don't know. We haven't worked that out yet." Well, I, I heard loud and clear that they didn't want non-aldermen on there as voting members. That they wanted the aldermen to be the voting members because obviously we're running and we can be elected out of office and so they don't like what we're doing. Uh, so that's another issue. There's a lot of issues. And that's why I'm, I'm really concerned. Again, I favor 10, but I think we're putting the cart before the horse. I really think that this should be thought out with the mayor's input uh, to just do it in a week or two. Um, another interesting thing I found out from Sue Richards I guess because I've been the longest here, and if I run again, and I run again in 17, in my 10 years on the council, I will have had three different sets of constituents because I'll be moving into Don Hammond's district and Susie Lassard's district in, if I run in 17. Welcome. <laughs> I know you got nice people over there, but I'm just building up a rapport with my second set of constituents. And, and again, so this... Another issue, and I think it's going to be the same thing for Joe if he decides to run. He's been up here as long as I have, and I'm not saying it's bad, but you do build up a, re a rapport with these people. They know who to, who to call, and then you're going to have to meet a whole other set of constituents. So anyway, 
I'll vote for it if we have a complete package, and this is all laid out ahead of time, but I'm not going to support it tonight. There's too many questions. Thank you. Well, these seats can technically change every two years when we have an election, so um, I, I don't think that's a very strong argument for not supporting this. Um, they can also change every 10 years when there's a census. Once again, I mean, I, want, I don't think that's a very strong argument. In terms of the committee structure, we're going to talk about it. We've been talking about this for years. This is not the first time this has come up. This is going to be the impetus to actually seriously look at our committee structure. When you look at any other city of comparable size, their councils are much smaller. Their committee structures are a lot more aligned. Just because we've been doing it for the same way for 50 years doesn't mean we should continue doing it. We shouldn't. There's plenty of committees that we can we can streamline, especially, I mean, we don't need to have committees, just have committees, and I feel like we are doing that right now. So anything else from the floor? If Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chuck, I just have a question about the 60 days. So somebody comes in in December, they take out papers for aldermen, and, uh, and we've passed this just prior to that. So 60 days in, uh, people are running for the office, circulating papers, and within that period, we're going to hit the, the deadline for taking out papers. Uh, isn't that going to cause a problem if there was a petition to, to go to a vote? I mean, can we really set ourselves up for this to happen? Yeah. So legally, you can do it. You could still pass this at the next council meeting, but you do have that particular problem where... Uh, people may be pulling papers and not knowing whether it's going to be for a one or for a two-year position. Is that proper? Legally, it's okay. Practically, there are real issues with it. You get past the next council meeting in approving it, you now also run into the time frames for the elections. And so realistically, delaying this in order for uh, the strategic fiscal planning to deal with it, you now have run out of time and you'd have to put, postpone everything a year. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I guess I need some clarification on this timeline. So if, we going, if we're going locked and loaded on, in 17 and we got 60 days from passing this, which would be November 16th if we did put this through next week, that puts us in January the 60 day window. So the uncertainty is already there during the polling paper time. Um, this thing again, technically doesn't take into effect until essentially the, the paper polling period of late 2016. I'm not sure why that creates this issue other than the fact that people might be pulling papers for a two year term when at the end of the day, it ends up being a one year term. But with this document out there, they understand that that's a possibility and then that could happen. Um, you know, I, I guess that whether we, if we did this, and I just looked it up on my phone, so I wasn't at, for those at home, you know, checking emails. Um, the that would be the 21st of December would be the second council meeting, or the 7th of December, which would be the first. Um, so 60 days from there would be in a month, you know, the end of February. What difference does that 30 days make? You've got a primary election potentially in February. They have to have the ballots ready. Sure, but they can take out the papers and knowing whether it's a one or a two year, they're not gonna know that before that anyways because January 16th is coming to be a referendum. Issues. The, the two different issues are first of all, whether people know that they're pulling one or two and you've correctly identified that mm -hmm. as, you know, if people know, they, they just have to deal with it, you know. Um, the other issue though is that there is a deadline for the ballots to be complete that, that the clerk's office has to meet and that's, I don't know the exact date, the, uh, the city clerk would know that, but I do know from my conversations with her that it is in January, and the ballot would need to indicate whether it's a one or a two year term. So that's, that's your problem with delaying this until, uh, if you would not pass this into, uh, until December, you now postpone this ordinance going into effect now into February, and it's too late to have the ballots properly prepared for the primary election in February. So we have to be sure that that ballot deadline is after January 16th. Yeah, from talking to Sue Richards, we're, we're okay with the time if you pass this at your next meeting, but that's it. 
That's also a conversation I had with the city clerk just before this meeting. Okay. Alderman Boren. Just one more legal question. Uh, being that this is a charter ordinance, if we vote on this affirmatively Monday night, that uh, doesn't that lie over? Or doesn't it lie over if it's a charter ordinance? Wouldn't we be voting on it, a final vote on it? Or would it automatically lie over and we wouldn't be voting on it until the second meeting you, in December? You can, you can make your final vote on it. Uh, it be, it's now at, at its second reading because this was not a direct referral. Any other comments from the floor? Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Chair. Um, I guess I just have a couple of things. I, I understand the spirit of the reducing it to 10, and I think that there's some um, very good concepts to that. I, I am, I'm concerned, though, overall, because we don't have the details, and I've heard it from several older persons that this has been talked about for many, many years. Um, I even remember it in the past when I was uh, part of the council. Concern that I have is that here we are at the 12th hour, um, and we don't have details. We don't have the structure. We don't we don't know quite what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and it's going to affect a lot of things. Are we making decisions because we're trying to get something done before the end of the year? Do we have an agenda? What's how do how is this going to affect? What if we were to vote on the concept of 10? and we put out there a year that this coming year we actually you know basically get the structure the, the uh, committees straightened out organized and then that way people voting in the future would know what they're what they're up for thank you alderman hammond thank you um i'd like to make an amendment to this um i would amend going from 16 to 10 by the 2017 2018 council year to the 2018 2019 council year Second. That would give us, to Chuck's point, that timeline goes away. Nice. And it would be December 1st of 2016 where we'd have to worry about some of that stuff. And so I just want to make sure that you're clear. Oh my, you're okay. putting out one year or two years? I would be putting out one more okay. year. Okay, because you I said 18, right? 19, but okay. Well, it's 17, 18 now, <coughs> council year, so I was putting right. out the 18. A is 16, 17, so A would change for, you would basically forward each date one correct. year correct second we that, do, i'm sorry you already second yep. <laughs> so that would give us i think that solves you know i think that solves a lot of a lot of some of the challenges we have of getting it through without the structure being put in place but also gets the wheels in motion to have this conversation and now it's on the book so um i would propose that amendment i believe it's been seconded thank you on the amendment alderman Boren. Uh, I would offer offer a friendly amendment to that, uh, and that would be that the that we would get a report back from the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee by the first council meeting in March of 16. Yeah. Do you accept that? That is a yeah, as a administrative point. Yeah, I would suspect we'd have something done well before that because the mayor is going to start thinking ahead for committees and Does stuff. Does the like that. second approve of that? Yeah. All right, anything else on the amendment? If not, we will be voting on the amendment. Anyone unclear as to what the amendment is? It's pushing everything back one year. All right. I'll call the vote? Yes. Okay. Bellinger? Aye. Bitters? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Damerill? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Strawn? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Herman? Nay. Jose? Aye. Huff? Nay. Lassard? Yay. Thiel? Aye. Vanderweel? Nay. Wolf? Aye. 13 ayes. All right, now on the document as amended. Any other discussion? If not, I would call the roll. Bellinger? Aye. Bitters? Aye. Horn? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Damerill? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Drawn? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Herman? Nay. Jose? Nay. Cuff? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Thiel? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. 
12. Aye. 14 ayes. All right. Motion passes. Moving on to 2.2, General Ordinance Number 33-15 by 16 by all the persons Carlson and Ballinger, an ordinance re-establishing the salary schedule for the office of all the person commencing in Council Year 2017 through 2018. Open it up to the floor. All the person Hammond. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I would move to approve for discussion purposes. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve under discussion. Oh, the person down to you. So I'm just interested in your rationale. Yes. It's, I, I've been on the council for, I think this is my fifth year. Um, I've brought this up in a more than one budget discussion. I, I think we're overpaid um, for what we do. Um, if you look at some other, all the um, city municipalities, um, there are some that pay less than us. There are some that pay more than us. Um, I know we live in a city, but however, and there's a lot of services provided for the tax dollars that we do expend. However, I believe we have put it to the taxpayers in terms of the wheel tax just recently, the garbage tax before that. Um, the city was just reevaluated. not that that had anything to do with us. I mean, that was a mandate by the state. Um, I think this is a show of good, um, good faith to our taxpayers just to reduce our salaries by $600. I don't think it's too much to ask. Other person born. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't think I'm underpaid for the amount of time that I put into this job. I do put a lot of time into it. Uh, for example, I think getting, getting ready for salary and grievance study alone with that volume of documents was at least an hour and a half. Uh, so I myself uh, do not think I'm underpaid. Uh, am I looking for more? No. Uh, also, I think there was an analogy in the paper by somebody that uh, because of the garbage fee passed and the wheel tax passed, uh, that somehow we should make a contribution. Well, the last time I checked, all 16 of us live in the city, and we're already making the contribution. I made that quote. Oh, was it you? Okay, well, whoever made it. We're, all, we're already making the contribution because we all live in the city. Over the next 10 years, I've got two vehicles. It's going to cost me 400 bucks. The garbage fee, I've made my contribution there, and I continue to make it, and it may get renewed, so I'll be making it again. So we're, all, we're already making that contribution. So I think for the people that are working hard in this job and putting in the time, I don't think we're overpaid at all. But I'm not looking for more money, but I think it should stay the way it is, so I'm going to vote against the pay decrease. Alderman Donahue. Well, I, I, I just react to this. Um, if you're going to change the salary, I think it should be either to reduce it substantially. I think the school board, for example, is paid... They might be up to $2,000 a year now, I, I'm not sure, um, uh, or pay a lot more. I mean, you can go to those extremes. $600 is apparently some effort to recompense the populace for the bad things we've done to them. I, <laughs> I disagree. I, the, tax, the tax levy rate in this city has hardly budged in 10 years. Now, think of anything else in the world that has stayed at a level that... It, Certainly the county hasn't. We should, both the administrative and the legislative part of city government, I think has done a splendid job in the last 10 years under extremely trying circumstances. So if the $600 is just a, oh, you're bad, you've imposed this wheel tax, you've imposed this garbage fee, um, and therefore you should be punished a little bit. Eh, I just don't buy it. So I think if you want to do something dramatic in either direction, well, we can talk about that. But I personally am not going to take the $600 as, you know, my penance for having kept the tax levy essentially the same over a decade, for having reduced our city debt, for having reduced our Department of Public Works from 120 to 80 people, from having kept the library levy absolutely flat for the last three years. I just don't have any apologies for that, so I'm voting against it. Thank you. Alderman Heidemann. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, the last time uh, Alderman Decker, I don't know if everybody who's all here, he had submitted a, a resolution. We all went along with it because we had passed a star resolution at the time. So we said, well, everybody's taking a hit. Okay, so now we're going to take another hit again. I guess my concern is not so much, I don't care. Take all my money. I don't, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> but my concern is this is a fast-track thing, Chairman. You seem to think that you can take everything, go past committees. We have a salary and grievance committee. 
Don't you think this should have been uh, 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 sent to that committee first, as opposed to basically being sure that it all gets done in a hurry just so we can get something done? I guess um, I take my responsibilities at that committee very, uh, they're very important. And this is where I would have saw this, I would have thought this document would have went to that committee first rather than right to the committee of the whole so we can quick get it slam dunked and done. Uh, I, you know, you're going around even with the next one. Again, that didn't go to salary, that didn't go to salary agreements either. What are you just trying to, now that the committee's going to, uh, the council's going to get smaller, you're going to be able to maneuver things faster and faster through city government? I, I guess I just have a problem with everything coming to the committee of the whole, then to the council, and skipping the committee process, which is what we have. So. All right, thank you. Well, I guess last time I checked, this is a committee. I mean, it's called Committee of the Whole, and it happens to be the committee that holds the entire body. So there's 16 of us here discussing a matter that affects every single one of us, or may not if we choose not to run. So sending it to salaries and grievances, I, I think, didn't need to happen because usually salaries and grievances deals with salaries and grievances of city employees. We are the legislative body here, Committee of the Whole, consists of the entire body, so why not bring it here and have the discussion? So thank you. Alderman Herman. Thank you. Nobody becomes an alderman to make money. That's obvious. We do this because we love our city. We care about our city. We want to make it a better place to live, work, and play. When I took out papers for this, I had no idea what the salary was, and I could have cared less. With that said, I do believe that the salary should reflect the importance and the prestige of the job. And if you drop the salary too low, it's not going to reflect the importance and prestige of the job. Now, it was mentioned that the city wants to attract more quality experienced people for the, for the council, which obviously makes sense. Well, if you drop the pay from 4,000 a year to 600, what type of quality experience leadership are you going to get for that? I mean, up to an outsider looking in, we know better. We know that it's an important job, but Sally Smith or Tom Jones, who's thinking about doing this, is going to say, hey, well, if they're dropping the pay from here to here, why should I bother with it? I mean, I, I'm very proud to be on this council, and I would do it you know, if the, if the pay were $80 less. But you know, in, in my personal financial situation, this job is keeping me afloat. I just lost two jobs in two, two months, so I, I can't afford to have my pay dropped. And 15 other people here, they have wives, husbands, children. They have um, a home to, to take care of. They need as much money in their pocket as they can. I, I enjoy this job. It's, it's like being a school teacher. You do it because you love it, not, not for the paycheck. But the pay uh, should be in line Please with the that. prestige of the job. Thank you. Alder Person Bellinger. Thank you, Chairman. A uh, question for the attorney. Can we structure, have a tiered pay scale where officers like president would make something different than the rest of the body? I believe you can. Um, you know, that would be a different ordinance, but I believe you can. Could I make a amendment to this indicating that? You can make any amendment okay. you like. I would like, <laughs> I would, I would like to do that. Um, since being on the council and, uh, you know, more recently uh, being vice president, uh, I've seen how much work and in, in time is involved. And, uh, you know, for the, the president of the council, that position uh, takes an inordinate amount of dedication, time, energy, um, away from the family. There's, there's things that um, people at, at, at home watching this on TV don't really understand or see day to day. Um, there's issues that come up daily. Uh, there's phone calls uh, when you're at work doing your regular job that you need that need immediate attention. You're running back and forth here. Um, you're putting out fires. You're you're dealing with uh, all all sorts of things. And uh, I would like to see the salary. I would make an amendment to increase the salary of the position of president for, uh, to five thousand dollars. And and that would be it. I, I I don't see any need for any other. 
uh, position to have any increase, but, but I would do that. All right, I have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? It's for discussion. I would second that. Um, under, under discussion. Alder Person Hammond. First off, thanks, John. Um, <laughs> but I want to, for the interest of disclosure, that I did not, this was, had nothing to do with me. Um, I just want, you know, I, I, it is a lot of work, um, but for this discussion, obviously, I will abstain. Um, but, you know, again, I appreciate the recognition of, of, the, of the work that the, the position does. Um, but, again, just for discussion, I'm going to abstain. But, you know, I appreciate the nice thoughts. You're welcome. Had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Alderman Boren. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Alderman Bellinger, just for clarification, does that mean that the salary for the president goes from 4600 up to 5000 So it's about yeah. a $400 increase? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this document came in as a companion document to the one we just talked about, and the year of implementation was meant to happen when we were electing everybody uh, for a 10-person council, and everybody would be elected at once. Right now, you're implementing it halfway through that transition, if, it, if we follow that course, and I'm just wondering if uh, an amendment might be necessary to keep these in line. I was going to mention that after this amendment, so but I, I do agree that we should implement it at the same time. Otherwise, things just might get tricky. So, but under the current amendment, um, any other discussion? Alderman Thiel. Thank you. Um, I'm all in favor of um, taking a decrease as long as I know that the money that we're giving back is going to something um, important. Um, under uh, right now, we're just speaking on the amendment. Oh, we are. So, yes. To well, it's going to tie into that. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would, the, the president's spot is actually an elected position by us that we feel, you know, that we want to put you, obviously, you know, with those responsibilities. Um, you know what you're getting into. You don't have to accept to be president or run for it if you're nominated. Um, I feel you're all in the same playing field. Yeah, Don, I know you do a ton of extra work. I know you do. But um, I just think this whole thing is, you know, giving something back um, to the city, and that's where it goes back to the, the dollar thing. Is I think if we're we're talking about giving, you know, back to the city as far as dollars, we need to see where that's going to go. A lot of times, these dollars just go into, you know, things that that I don't believe in, and I'd like to see where dollars go. I think we need um, my belief now that we got a lot of things going on in the city as far as we got a road plan. We have all these other things going on as far as um, development and stuff. The next thing we really need to attack is, um, I think, putting more police force on. And I think we need to look at some of these dollars going to that. We have a serious issue, and I think, in the city of Sheboygan, and we don't have enough people to take care of it. And if I know those dollars are going to get us more police officers that we need in the city to, to combat some of that stuff, I'm all in favor of it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Discussion on the amendment. Alderman Jose. Uh, just two comments. If the amendment passes to increase the one position to 5,000 and the other go, go down to 4,000, in effect, and assuming that the other, the previous charter ordinance we pass applies for 10 positions, it's, unless my math is fuzzy, it's going to be $5,000 a year, which is a drop in the bucket. And I think it's just some grandstanding so some people can look better about what they did to give back. $5,000 isn't going to do anything, is my first comment. Second comment is, uh, unlike the post office, which continues to charge more money and provide less services, you're now, in effect, reducing the size of the council so people have to serve on more committees, and at the same time, reducing the compensation. So. You're doing the reverse. You're now asking people to do more work for less money. Thank you. Under the amendment. If there isn't anything else, I'd like to call the roll. Ballinger. Aye. Bitters. Uh, this is on the amendment. Yes. Um, aye. Warren. Nay. Carlson. Nay. Aye. Yes. Damro. Aye. Donahue. No. Thrawn. Aye. Hammond. Abstain. Heidemann. Nope.
Herman? Nay. Jose? Nay. Half? Nay. Lassard? Nay. Peel? Nay. Vanderweel? Nay. Wolf? Nay. Five ayes and 11 noes. Right. The amendment fails. Now the document as presented. Um, I would just like to comment that um, there's many of us in this room, including myself, that sit on nonprofit boards outside of this body, and we do it for free. I spend a lot of time with a nonprofit board as well as many others. I'm not going to call out any names, but we do it for free because we feel it's something we should do. And the idea that I'm grandstanding on here, up here to save $5,000 is quite offensive, actually. Um, once again, I, I think it's a show of good faith. I think, I, I actually don't disagree with all the person Donahue. I mean, we, I think we should lower it even more, but I didn't, I, I didn't have, a, I didn't think this was going to pass anyways, which kind of counters um, us as a body and us in a democracy, in my opinion. We're, we're sitting up here trying to um, keep more money for the amount of work that we do. It, it, it just, I, I, I see something fundamentally wrong with it, but once again, we, we have people all over the place sitting on nonprofit boards doing it for free that spend more time than people do within City Hall on city business. But I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you. Alderman uh, Lassard. Yes, thank you. If, we're, if this is going to take effect in two years, we're reducing the council from what we have to 10. Is that not a contribution to the budget right there? That's in addition to, yes. I'm not in favor of this, so I will be voting against it. And and um, I think the savings, we all work hard at what we do, and I myself am on a non-for-profit board and work as hard for that as well. But there's more accountability when we're an alderman, and there's more phone calls that happen, and um, I'm just not in favor of this at all. Thank you. You're welcome. Alderman Heideman. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. You know, uh, and you say that we look like we're going to be, we want to keep the money for the job that we do. Uh, one of the things that, I was the mayor in Sheboygan Falls, I made, I make more money as an alderman than it is a mayor in Sheboygan Falls. But quite honestly, sir, you can put your check wherever you want. You can give all, your entire salary to the general fund if you want to do that. If you really feel that bad about the $4,600 that you make. Thank you. Any other discussion? Otherwise, uh, the, the mayor did bring up an important um, part, so I would, um, uh, in terms of the years, uh, the 17 to 18, I, I think it should um, coincide with the previous document, so I would like to make that amendment that it would take effect in uh, 18 and 19. Second. Would that be correct? Commencing yes. in 2018. 2018. All right, I have a motion and a second to uh, adjust the dates. Um, under the amendment, any discussion? All right, it's voting on the amendment only. I thought we did. No, oh, we voted on it. New Ellinger? Aye. Oh. Bitters? Aye. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Damerel? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Drawn? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Okay. Yeah. Herman? Thank you. <laughs> Herman? Pardon? Jose? Aye. Ha? No. Lassard? Aye. Beal? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wolf? Aye. 15 ayes. All right, the amendment passes. Now we have the document as amended. Any other discussion? If not, I'd like to call the roll. Bellinger? Aye. Bitters? Aye. Horan? No. Carlson? Aye. Damro? Aye. Donahue? No. Drawn? Aye. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Nope. Herman? Nay. Jose? Nay. Half? No. Lassard? No. Peel? No. Vanderweel? No. Wolf? No. Five ayes and 11 noes. All right, it does not pass. Moving on to 2.3, resolution number 93-15 by, six, uh, by Alder Persons Carlson and Bellinger. A resolution instructing the appropriate city officials to draft the necessary ordinances, resolutions, or regulations so as to eliminate the position of chief administrator officer, effective August 23, 2016, and shift the various duties and responsibilities of the chief administrative officer to the mayor, finance director, and comptroller city treasurer. Alder Person Bellinger. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was approached by Alderman Carlson. He gave me a phone call and said he was going to be introducing this and wanted to know if I wanted to sign on to it. And I mentioned to him at that point in time that I had a, um, a communication that I was going to bring forth uh, in December regarding looking at the um, potential to go to a city manager uh, form of government uh, rather than what we have right now. And in my discussion with Alderman Carlson, I agreed to, to go on to sign on to this because my only intent was to have this body have a, discu a discussion on how we want to govern ourselves moving forward and how we want to represent the constituents of the city in the best possible manner. Um, I don't have any real strong um, a, a opinion of, of this particular document, but I have I want to have a discussion on the, you know, all the options that are available, whether it be um, just go to uh, the, the previous mayor situation that, or form of government that we had before, keep the city administrator uh, like we're doing right now, go with a city manager, you know, that's an option as well. I just want to have that discussion and, and have that out there and, and see which way we want to go. Um, you know, quite frankly, I was not real um, positive about the city manager as far as having this body vote on it. I don't think anybody would would want to do that without first going through a referendum and uh, the timing of that would have to be on the on the April election to have a referendum so that's why I wanted to bring it forth in in December and have the discussion and see if if we wanted to put it on a referendum but uh, I think it's very important that we have this discussion. We've got uh, Administrator Amodio is going to be retiring this, in this next year, um, and then we're going to have a mayor election in the spring of 17. So I think the timing is, is perfect to have this discussion and see which way uh, we think that we can best represent the citizens of, of the city. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, for uh, I would move to file. Second. Second. All right. I have a motion and multiple seconds to file <laughs> under discussion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, did you chime in? Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. He still has a phone. Go ahead, Mike. No, nope, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, sorry. Eldon Berg uh, was the former, a former alderman and sent out some minutes and some uh, recommendations from a government structure committee that was held about five or six years ago. Uh, that committee's recommendations uh, caused the council to adopt the current form of government which we have. And I was a member of that committee and voted for it. And now as mayor, I get to live with it. And I think it's a good way to go. I, I really feel that the structure that we have right now uh, allows us, and, and it makes it more of a, a prerequisite, that we have to work with each other. The mayor in the past has been had the prerogative to push this city in a certain direction, and, and now he's got to work with the president of the council and the administrator to make things happen. You have to, uh, I think, be much more conciliatory, and you have to sell your programs to the greater group rather than just pushing things around. Uh, my secretary, Mary, now, I'm the fifth mayor she's worked with. And when you have that kind of turnover in the mayor's job, I hope it's not going to happen in the future, but <laughs> it, it causes the city to go in different directions, and that can cost us some money in the process because things are being done differently by each mayor that comes into that office. So I really think we have a good form of government. I enjoy working in, in the system that I'm in, and I hope that you'll file this and keep it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, you know, I guess, uh, and to the mayor's point, you know, that was part of the reason uh, we brought the city administrator on board. Obviously, the history of it is well documented, and I don't want to necessarily rehash the history. Um, but, you know, as the person that works the closest with that position, you know, I will tell you it's an invaluable position. And in my opinion, um, professional management trumps management by popularity any time. Um, you know, some argue that the cost savings, I would argue, um, in the current position is saved or cost avoided well more than its salary uh, currently is. Secondly, um, or excuse me, thirdly, um, you know, our job is to provide the vision and direction for the organization, whether it's the mayor's office or ours as a council. It's the uh, chief administrative officer's job to implement that vision. When you go back to the silos where each department is running their own rides, um, or with their own coconuts, 
um, <laughs> you lack the ability to have a cohesive vision or have that cohesive vision um, implemented. When I took over, that wasn't there. Right, that department heads were all doing their own things. They weren't working together. They weren't talking together. Now they are, and the you know you don't have to look any farther than our IT program to to understand how that's worked. When I came on board, we had Munis, and we had all these modules for Munis we weren't even using, but we're paying for. And now they're slowly being implemented, and they're working and they're talking together. And department heads are talking together about how they can do things better, more efficiently, and more effectively. That doesn't happen if you don't have an administrative person at the top that doesn't have to deal with the politics of things and worry about those types of things. Finally, and I think the mayor made this point, it allows for us to not only have an executive branch that's active and involved in the day-to-day -day stuff, but it also now gives the rep, uh, legislative branch an active and participatory voice because I can't be here every day. Alderman Bellinger can't be here every day. I spend about 20 hours a week on average in this, you know, dealing with you know, things that go on inside this building but I can't be here every, all the time. So I think having that position makes a lot of sense. And again, it's almost like a checks and balances to what's going on to, to the mayor's point. We all have to work together um, and you know, again, provide that vision and direction so that the staff has it. And then again, the city administrator implements it. So those are my comments. Um, you know, I appreciate the conversation and would be happy to have the conversation around a city manager um, you know, to ferret that out and vet that out. Um, but getting rid of the city administrator at this point just doesn't make any sense to me. Thank right. you. Thank you. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you. Um, first of all, uh, thank you, Alderman Carlson, for bringing this um, uh, resolution forward because I think it gives us an opportunity to think things through. Two, I'd like to give a shout out to two people, Eldon Berg. Eldon, you might be watching tonight, and I hope you are, but I just want to thank Eldon for his thoughtfulness even in the time that he's not able to be here on the floor with us to send all the information out that he had sent and his continuing interest in all sorts of things that apply to the city and we're all richer for that. I was going to give a shout out to uh, Mayor Vandersteen because I'm going to speak against the uh, eliminating the city administrator position. I was going to say I respect him so much for the work that he's done but after his comments tonight I have to tell you I respect him even more. So the opportunity or the, the vision that you have, Mike, for the city as a whole and everybody working together, I just really appreciate, I think we all in this room appreciate it and everybody who's watching and everybody here. And so I really, I, so a shout out to you. That being said, Alderman Hammond said everything I was going to say and probably a few things more. But I just want to tell you this story because when I was thinking about this, it came to me. <clears throat> When we brought our second born home from the hospital, he was in a little bassinet, and our older son was about two and three quarters. And one day I had Flan, my younger, on, 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 on my lap, and Michael just kind of climbed up and he said, Mom, I just want it to go back to the way that it used to be. And I think that sometimes in city government, particularly in Sheboygan, we just kind of want things to go back to the way that it used to be, and we can't for the reasons that Alderman Hammond said, we're a big municipal corporation. We have a multi-million dollar budget. It needs to be professionally and not politically managed. I, I think things are working really pretty swell at this point. And again, Alderman Carlson, I thank you for you know, bringing this forward uh, for us to talk about, but I need to vote against it. And I am certainly happy to think about a city manager position. I do think though that we're not ready to give up our mayor and probably we shouldn't. Thank you. And I originally intended on speaking before everyone else did, considering this is my document, so I'm going to take that chance right now. It would be kind of odd if I didn't speak on behalf of my own document. So um, I, I first just want to thank uh, the city administrator of Modio for the work he has done. This was no reflection on him. Um, he, he was the, uh, the perfect candidate at the right place at the right time. Um, he's done amazing things for the finances of this city. We all know that. Our debt level is lower than it has been in, in a very long time. I'm not going to throw out a bunch of numbers because it does, it it's, doesn't matter at this point, but Jim has done an awesome job, so this was not a reflection of his abilities. But with that being said, he has kind of righted the ship. He has put us in a good position, a better position than where we were at prior to um, his existence within the city. Um, as cliche as it sounds, I, I believe in a representative democracy, and that's why I brought this forward. Uh, we have mayors all across the United States that run a city, 
and that's why I brought this forward. Um, but I, I kind of knew this was doomed to fail from the beginning, and especially since there are lots of phone calls being made this weekend. So, um, but at, the, at this point, I will um, defer to Alderman Boren. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I agree with, with I'm, I'm going to be voting no on this also. Uh, I agree with what Alderman Hammond said and Alderperson Donahue. I'm on my fourth mayor since I've been up here. And I, could, I can say that since Mike has been mayor with the job he's been doing, uh, my blood pressure medication has been cut in half compared to some of the drama we've had uh, with some other ones. Uh, I also think uh, the position of chief administrative <coughs> officer has been excellent for the city of Sheboygan. I think uh, uh, Jim on balance has done an outstanding job and I wish him well in his retirement and uh, I think we should continue with the, with the position, no doubt. Thank you. All right, I have one more light on. Alderperson Herman. Thank you. Uh, I have to echo Mike's sentiments. After thinking about this long and hard, I do believe the chief administrator's job should stay as, as is. You need to build consensus and have a sounding board, not only for Mike, but for President Hammond's uh, point. It's good to have uh, the Chief Amadeo uh, doing what he's doing. It's good to have an administrator, whether it's uh, Jim or somebody else. Other cities in the, in the state have gone to this format. I believe 42 cities have gone to this format in the last four years. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Things are working well as they are. Keep the chief administrator's job. Thank you. Thank you. And just so everyone is clear, the motion on the floor is to file the document. So um, if you want to keep the things the way they are, you should vote yes, just to be clear here. All the person, Ballinger. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I'm going to be voting in, in favor of filing this as well. Um, I'm, I'm glad we were able to have, um, however brief it has been, a, a discussion on, on how we want to move forward. Um, I do think there are some some uh, merits of, of city manager, and you know we can look at that, you know, you know further down the road, or you know when we've got, uh, you know, more time to look at that in depth. Um, but um, when. But prior to me becoming an alderman, when the position of the city administrator was created, um, I, I thought at the time it was, you know, something that probably needed to be done, however hastily it, it appeared. But uh, in seeing how things now in my four years on the council have, have transpired in, in, in working with the city administrator, um, I, I think the people that, that were part of that uh, created a wonderful solution for the city. Uh, as President Hammond mentioned the checks, there's checks and balances in place. Um, it, it relieves some of the pressure off, off of his position. Um, the mayor mentioned that, uh, uh, he, that, that the mayor's position needs to be more conciliatory and, and work in, in concert with um, the legislative and the administrative body. So um, I, I think what we've got is really working really well. And, um, and that is a... Uh, um, you know, a credit to the people, you know, namely President Hammond, who was, was here when, when that was created, and, and to uh, Administrator Amodio for the outstanding job that he's, he's done. So um, he's been a tremendous asset to the city, and, you know, hopefully that uh, he's got a, a nice, long, fruitful retirement, and we're able to find somebody that uh, is equally as capable to take his place. All right. Thank you. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I did spend time on the Government Structure Committee and received a telephone call from Eldon Berg, and I had uh, in indicated at that time that I would in no way be supporting uh, getting rid of the administrative officer position because uh, the gentleman that holds it right now and the gentleman in the future I'm not going to be able to do the job. But in your document, it, it, it says there are questions about the future of the necessity. What are your questions, Alderman Carlson? What's the, what's the question? Uh, why, why would you want to get rid of the city administrator? I think I stated my position already. I'd like I, to hear it again. I believe in a representative democracy where the figurehead is elected by the people. I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward, Joe. We, we have a mayor that's elected by the people. This was put into place to put that difference between having a mayor having control over all, all the department heads and making a decision to, to improve the government in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, and, and I was on that committee, and... Um, you wanted to eliminate that. I do, yes. Yeah. Well, I think Jim does a great job. I wish you felt the same way. That's not what we're debating here today. So, 
Any other questions or comments from the floor? If not, I'd call the roll. Okay. What are we, could vote. explain what we're voting File. on? Filing the document. So it, so point I, of order? So yes. If you want to file it. Okay. Point of order, um, if, if to file it, you vote yes, or necessarily to kill it, you vote yes. If, to, if, you want it to, if you want to get rid of the city administrator, vote no. Is that clear for everybody? Yep. Okay. Bellinger? Aye. Bitters? Aye. Horn? Aye. Carlson? Nope. Damro? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Drawn? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Tideman? Aye. Herman? No. Jose? Aye. Kopp? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Thiel? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wolf? Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. All right, uh, motion to file passes. With that being said, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, wait, Mr. Wait, Chair. Wait, Second. Wait. Oh, Herman. His vote oh, changes okay. to a yes. All right. Motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.